Hey, uh, so uh, a customer uh, was having trouble troubleshooting his mixer. I thought, cool, I'll make a video showing not only how to troubleshoot the AIO2 mixer, but also on just troubleshooting uh, using audio probing, which is a great way to uh, probe a, a low voltage circuit that processes uh, audio, um, especially one that has uh, a passive input phase like many, many modules do. Um, so to start, I printed out the uh, AIO2 schematic. Um, I've got a smartphone playing MP3. Uh, might be my band, forcedamage.com. Uh, might not be. And then usually I would use uh, headphones to do this, just regular passive headphones. Um, in this case, I'm going into the uh, computer so you can follow along at home. Uh, so the first thing I want to do is just uh, probe power. Um, there's one IC, um, it's correctly uh, laid in. If it's not, it would probably smoke. Um, so, you know, that's not the problem. This mixer works, by the way, but it'll show you the steps of troubleshooting. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm um, using the uh, wall wart power supply as a bench power supply, and I've got it uh, my multimeter on bench mode. So it's going to stick the negative probe to ground to give me a ground reference point. And then the schematic tells me that eight pin eight of this IC is the positive power and pin four is the negative power. So I'm just going to make sure it's getting that. And I can see on the multimeter it is on pin eight and negative on pin four. It's exactly what I want. Now I'm going to turn the power supply off because I don't need to do that anymore. Now we can just look at the traces on the front and back of the PCB to see where things go. Um, and we can also use our connectivity tester to see where things go. I know where things go because I made the darn thing. So let's see if I'm right. Uh, so if I remember correctly, uh, we, we see that there's uh, audio in and that goes to one pin of this A100K potentiometer. Um, and then the middle goes to a resistor, R1, and then uh, goes over to the IC network uh, mix network to get uh, mixed and uh, buffered by the, uh, the op amp. Um, and there's a ground pin on the uh, input jack. There's also one on the other side of the potentiometer. So I know that these two guys will have connectivity and they can be a happy beep. I also know that the input should be connected to this pin here. So if I hit the tip of this yellow cable plugged in here, I get connectivity there. Awesome. And then that middle one, that middle pin, that's the output. So that should be going to one end of this resistor there. And then this guy goes down into pin two. Uh, so that, so we can trace components this way, making sure that they are soldered and in place. You never want to test on the pad itself. You only want to test, so you wouldn't test here, you would test here. The reason you wouldn't test here is because at this point I'm touching the PCB. We already know that that connects because there's a copper trace running in the PCB. So you always want to test component pin to component pin, not uh, at the PCB level. Anyway, let's get to the actual audio probing. So I'm just going to start this up so that I have something to play. Uh, and then I'm going to hook the input here, so now I'm going into input one. A lot of times when I'm testing, I'll like to use Sharpie to mark the knob position, uh, so that can tell me what I'm working with. And then I use a couple of alligator clips. Uh, so normally, I would be this blue cable would be your headphones, um, or if you have a a bench uh, amp. And I'm going to take the the input pin, the power pin, here, and I'm just going to kind of leave this hanging out for a second. And then I have to connect ground as well. So I'm just going to connect the ground pin of this jack to the ground pin of that plug. So now I know I'm plugged. So now I can do a couple things to test. I can do um, a baseline test by connecting here, just touching that pin, and I should get music. And then I can, oh, well, if I turn it up. If I don't turn it up, oh well. I should get music there, and then I can test it on the output, see if I get music there, and then 
if I test it here, where I know that that middle pin connects to that resistor, then I know that at least the circuit is working up to that point, right? I know that all of those components work. And then I can plug it to that other side of the resistor and it'll be a little quieter because it's going through the resistor, but there's that, great. So I know that's working. And then I can probe that down all the way, if I'm careful, to pin two, which is where they all connect to the op amp. And I have to be careful not to hit any other guys, but I can probe it right there. Perfect, it works. Uh, and I can repeat that all the way down with each channel and see where it's wrong. Usually the soldering errors that I find on the O2, and it's always soldering error because there's no wires. It's either that or the chip's blown up because if you reverse it, that's what happens. Uh, it's almost always with uh, the hardware. Uh, resistors people usually solder in with no problem, but um, the, the uh, potentiometers and the jacks uh, have a little bit more metal. They need a little bit more heat, a little bit more patience. Uh, so that's typically where uh, those errors end up. Um, that's how you use an audio probe to debug. Hope that helps you debug your tools and uh, happy synthing.